Well, first they came for Alex Jones, and I said nothing, because I thought he was a Fruit Loop. And then they came for Gab AI, and I said nothing, because they were harboring nasty people. When are they going to come for us? See, it's important that we bring this up on a Christian channel because the world is becoming more and more progressively disdainful and then that's the first step to hateful towards Christianity. At what point in time do we get labeled as conducting hate speech because we say, according to the Bible, homosexuality is a sin? And we're not picking on that individual sin because as is the sin of fornication and adultery and a whole host of other things that the American Christians, particularly Western Christians in general, are mostly engaged in. Isn't it not fascinating that the countries where the, the church is growing the fastest and simultaneously the strongest are in places where the true faith is illegal? That's something to keep in mind. Remember that. When the true faith is illegal, we have a case of persecution. When persecution is in the church, it grows strong. And this is where we are coming on to an election, and a lot of particular uh, Christians will simply go, oh, I'm going to vote Republican. Maybe you'll look at one exact issue. Oh, this guy here is pro-life, so i got to go with him. That's not the most important issue right now. The most important issue right now is one of free speech and one of silence and one of spre spreading the gospel. Because ultimately the task of us as Christians is not to make sure that the laws of our nation don't cause abortion. The most important thing for us Christians right now is that the laws of our nation allow us to preach the gospel. And the problem is, is that now we have two instances of cases in the last month or two, I guess it's two months or so, where people have been deplatformed entirely in this age where very few people read the newspapers, very few people watch regular television. All that we consume, it, it is television, but it is network cable television. It is websites, but it is social media. It is YouTube, it is Twitter, it is uh, Facebook, it is Instagram, and you have all of these things where these companies are driving the conversation and allowing or disallowing certain speech to be on them. And what happens is people don't like what Alex Jones says, and I'm with you, he's a Fruit Loop, but I appreciate his freedom to be a Fruit Loop so long as he's not actually causing violence. If he's actually causing violence, I haven't seen the cases of those. Now again, if you have them, please look. Somebody did post some to my previous video on Alex Jones, and I accidentally deleted it instead of uh, hitting the like and going through. It was an accidental thing. I'd like to see these because I haven't actually seen them. Yes, he's done some very distasteful things, but short of him actually spreading out a plan to kill somebody, he needs to have the freedom to spout his insanity because the freedom of choice and the freedom of, well, the freedom of speech is so critical for us as believers because our message is not a political one to transform the laws of this nation. Our message is not one where we have to get everyone to vote a certain way. Our message is a message of the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are we free to preach the gospel? And the first fundamental thing in the gospel of Jesus Christ is to recognize what is sin. Because it's only when we come to grips with what sin is that we actually are able to recognize our need for a savior. When we know what sin is and we come to that grasp, that realization that I am a sinner, that is the first fundamental portion of the gospel. You must recognize you are a sinner. I am a sinner. We are a world of sinners. 
And then when we recognize that and that we are powerless over that sin, that we come and place our faith in Jesus Christ, who was perfectly God and perfectly man, free from the sin nature in us, but went on the cross and died for us, that one sacrifice, the one propitiation by which we are made right before God. And then only when we recognize and appreciate and accept that into our lives, only then are we free. Then we feel the burden of the sin, the weight of what our pasts lifted off of us, and then we are free to go out and tell others about the wonderful Savior we have in Jesus Christ. It is a message of the Word. It is a message of the Gospel, and that is the message that is most under assault. Because First they got rid of Alex Jones, then they got rid of an entire platform. We're talking here about Gab.ai. An entire platform was taken down because one person used his speech in a hateful way. And that one person, they should have taken the page down, which they did, archived it so it couldn't be altered, which they did, and then a case made against this person. Here's the funny thing. There's a whole lot of people that followed this guy and nobody raised an alarm. You see, it does take, in this world, raising an alarm. This also happened this week, but good news is never reported, where a person made some hateful content with somebody on Twitter. Guess what? Twitter didn't act. The person acted. The person called the police. The police went to do to a check on this guy who was spouting violent tendencies and they found a manifest and weapons to commit mass murder. And they took the guy down. Guys, the free speech, the stupidity he did led to his capture and arrest before it happened. Because a person was vigilant to see what was going on. But what happens is Alex Jones is taken down. Gab.ai is taken down because they don't like what they say. Now, Gab.ai was an interesting case because it was one bad actor took down the entire platform. They need somewhere to host them. No one's holding their domain. All of the payment processors have walked, wiped away. Basically, nobody's allowed to talk on that platform at this point in time because if you're not in alignment with what the platform says or the greater internet says. And this cuts us right back full circle. When it is illegal, when it is considered hate speech for me to simply declare homosexuality is a sin according to the Bible, at what point in time do they ban everything dealing with the Bible? You see, first they came for Alex Jones. I said nothing because I wasn't a conspiracy theorist. Then they came for Gab.ai, but I said nothing because my speech agreed with the rest of the world and then they will come for the rest of us because at some point in time every one of us are has sayings thoughts or opinions that aren't in alignment with the majority that controls ownership over these platforms and then at that point in time, we have lost the ability to declare what sin really is. Walk into one of these modern day churches, you know what you never find? You never find the sin. We're saving Jesus. I, of course, I wrote an entire book parroting the book called The Art of Neighboring, okay? And one of the things in there is they talk about, we have taken the, the parable of the Good Samaritan and we've metaphoricalized it. We've turned it into this metaphor where it's all out there and all out there and all out there, but what the book and what almost every major church in this country fails to do is to recognize that we have metaphorized sin itself. We have metaphorized sin itself, which means we say, oh, let's all love Jesus because he makes our life better. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. When we metaphorize sin and we can't call out this sin specifically by nature and by action, and that sin specifically by nature and by action, we have no basis to start sharing the gospel. So first they came for Alex Jones. I said nothing because I wasn't a conspiracy theorist. And then they came for Gab.ai and I said nothing because I hadn't been deplatformed. Now that they're going to come for the rest of us, there will be no one left to speak for us. It is every tiny slivers at a time that gets taken out at one little point in time. And of course, if you agree with Alex Jones, oh, you must be a conspiracy theorist. If you agree with Gab.ai, you must be an anti-Semite. 
And that is not the case. That is not the case. We need to keep free speech intact. And yes, I'm with you. We need to have a method to identify what is a hate crime and pull those off and find and make sure those people are not actually doing things. But we need to define what does that mean, which should be defined specifically as a physical action or the threat of a physical action. The guy who did the perpetration in the Jewish community threatened a physical action. And by all rights, somebody should have said something prior to that event, but nobody chose to. Maybe the platform should have taken a chance, but how many people saw those posts? How many people liked those posts, shared those posts, commented on those posts, and said nothing? It is not the platform's fault, ultimately. It is the person's fault, ultimately. And the point being, they are slowly wiping out everything that is not in a perfect alignment with what the will of these groups want. And that means eventually us as Christians are coming down the pipeline very, very soon. We have to be careful of that. But also as Christians, we need to love all people. We need to dissociate ourselves from the groups like Westboro Baptist Church, which is not a church and that is not Christianity and that is nothing except a front for Satan. We need to avoid anybody that wants to commit any form of violence in the name of God. That's what the Crusades were and it was wrong. And that's why I don't have any stock in the Catholic Church because when we this, but, but understand this, the modern church growth movement is not a lot different because the modern church growth movement wants to drag us along. It wants to drag us along into their plan and their mission. And that's not our task. We, it is not our task to be part of our plan. You know, I, I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. It's not our task to follow the mission of the church. That's what led to the Crusades. It's our task to follow the mission that God sent us. And that mission, mission is one of the gospel. It is one of love. It is one of helping and supporting our fellow man, whether they are Jewish or whether they are Islamic or whether they are believers or whether they are total atheists and completely hate us. It is the task of the believer to love and to support all people, preaching the gospel using words when necessary, but living out our life in Jesus Christ. So with that, we will leave you with this. We need not stand on just the Republican or just the Democratic side in this election. We don't need to focus on who's just pro-life. We need to focus on who's going to make sure we have the ability to keep preaching the gospel. So share around this video if you found it uh, helpful. Uh, I'd appreciate that. So thanks for coming along on this daily walk. You can help support this channel by having a look at the links in the description down below. I have some books. Um, I have Testing and Temptations, which is a book about Christian sanctification, how to become more like Jesus in your regular life. And I have another book called Art of Shallow Neighboring, which is a parody of that book that I talked about earlier. Uh, Art of Shallow Neighboring should be out on audiobook soon. I will begin the production of Testing and Temptations uh, as well in the next few weeks as well. So keep an eye out for those as of recording this video. Those are not out yet, uh, but those are coming down the pipeline. Uh, so also take a look at the other links in the description down below and check out ourwalkingchrist.com forward slash support for more ways you can help support the channel. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.